Intel may have finally fixed the gaming performance on their new Core Ultra CPUs, but how good is it now and should you actually buy one? Let's talk about it. Before that, if you just built or bought a new PC and you don't want to spend $200 on a Windows 11 Pro license, well, thankfully, VIP CDK Deals has just what you need, offering excellent prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 or 11 Pro OEM key for a great deal. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off, bringing the total to just $23 for Windows 11 and $17 for Windows 10, and you can even find great deals on products such as Office 2019. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate your new copy of Windows, just search activate under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. So initial reviews of Intel's new Core Ultra 200 processors, including the 285K and 265K, were pretty lukewarm because although they had finally addressed the high power consumption and instability of the 14th generation and the multi-core performance was very good, well unfortunately the gaming performance actually regressed a bit leading to Intel falling far behind AMD's best gaming chips. Now for many gamers it was definitely disappointing but since then Intel's been hard at work fixing the inconsistent performance in games and just recently they dropped the fifth and possibly final big fix for Arrow Lake which promises to improve performance. But does it actually and by how much? Well, in order to get to the bottom of that, I reached out to Intel for a Core Ultra CPU, and to my surprise, they connected me with a local PC builder, Zydax, to send over a whole PC for this review. So the system I'll be testing today is the Zydax X6. It comes with an Intel Core Ultra 7 265K, an RGB 360 millimeter AIO, an MSI MPG Z890 Carbon Wi-Fi, an 80 plus gold PCIe 5 850 watt power supply, 16 gigabytes of 6000 mega transfer DDR5, a 4070 Super, a 1 terabyte SSD, and Windows 11 Home. Though I will be replacing the GPU with an RTX 4090 so I can compare it to my AMD systems as well to get more data and ensure that I'm never being GPU bound. And by the way, they did a great job in this build and after getting to look around their warehouse, I can tell they really care about PCs and if you want to order one for yourself, I'll have a link in in the description below. But in any case, for these systems I'll be testing, I'm gonna go over nine different games, Baldur's Gate 3, Counter-Strike 2, Cyberpunk 2077, Dragon's Dogma 2, Hogwarts Legacy, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Starfield, Total War Warhammer 3, and finally Warhammer 40K. And I'll be comparing the out-of-the-box stock numbers to the fully updated BIOS and Windows data for Intel with the 265K, as well as comparing that to a 7800X 3D and a 9800X 3D. So let's jump into it and let's start off with Counter-Strike 2. Now this is going to be at 720p native resolution and using high settings and here you can see at launch we got an average frame rate of 435 but actually after all the updates that's now jumped up to 502 and that actually brings up the average frame rate by around 15 percent and the one percent lows increased from 162 to 180 giving an 11 percent increase. Now it is still far behind the 7800x3d and the 9800x3d in this particular game, but as you'll see later in the video, it won't always be that way, especially if you're willing to overclock. But now let's move on to Cyberpunk 2077 720p DLSS performance using RT Max, and here they're actually all pretty similar. So in some instances, well, you're just not going to see a huge improvement via these updates. Although the 9800x3 and 7800x3 definitely had higher average frame rates. But then moving on to Microsoft Flight Sim 720p native resolution, ultra settings and once again we're getting a pretty decent uplift 10% increase versus launch on the average and 16% increase on the 1% lows but yet again the 7800x3d and the 9800x3d are still significantly ahead and then the final game I'll be going over with you guys is actually going to be Warhammer 40k 720p native resolution ultra settings and here once again the updates didn't do a whole lot so as you can see it's going to be very hit or miss whether or not the game you play gets a significant uplift. But with up to a 16% improvement on the 1% lows with Microsoft Flight Sim, there are definitely some instances where it's going to be a pretty significant uplift. And overall, across the nine different games, at 720p, we're looking at a 7% increase on average.
average and an 8% increase on the 1% lows. But unfortunately, the 7800XRD and 9800XRD are still significantly ahead, and even the older generation 7800XRD is around 11% better on those 1% lows even after all these updates. So this just still isn't quite enough to get it to a point where it's gonna be very competitive in gaming. But there's a couple of things that I think you might want to consider when it comes to the i7-265K. I mean, first of all, the price is definitely lower. We're talking around $360 is the lowest I've seen on this, whereas the 9800X3D is still really difficult to buy at all, and the 7800X3D is still often well in excess of $400, meaning that you are going to get potentially better value for multi-core out of this thing, considering that the i7-265K has way more cores. But before we get into the multi-core, first take a look at this overclocking result that I got out of the CPU. Now I did go ahead and change out the 16 gigabytes of 6,000 megatransfer RAM on this system for actually an 8,400 megatransfer kit that was sent to me by Kingston. And this kit is absolutely insane. It's one of the new CU DIMM kits and that alone got me a pretty substantial improvement to the performance. But I also overclocked both the P cores, the E cores, the die to die, as well as the fabric clocks and all those things together in Cyberpunk 2077 got me an enormous performance uplift. We're talking around 30% faster versus launch after all the BIOS updates and overclocking and 22% faster on the 1% lows. And in fact, it actually made it so that the i7-265K in Cyberpunk 2077 was now getting the best performance on the 1% lows. Now, to be fair, the 9800X3D was still a bit ahead when it comes to the average frame rate, but this is really impressive stuff and goes to show that there's a lot of room left in the tank for the 265K. But I want to touch on this in a future video where I can expand across nine different games and figure out on average, is this really going to be 30% faster or is this a one-off? But even if this was a one-off, well, you still have to consider that the i7-265K is not only going to be drawing far less power, but look at the multi-core performance benchmarks. Again, like I mentioned earlier, it has a lot more cores and because that's the case, well, we're talking about a 58% improvement in terms of the multi-core performance after an overclock and even before an overclock we're talking in excess of I believe around 40% versus a 9800X3D in Cinebench R23 and an 11% improvement in the single core performance. So it's very clear to me after doing some overclocking and testing the gaming as well as the BIOS updates that not only was the Core Ultra 265K severely in need of these BIOS updates but it also clearly has a latency problem as the cores themselves are clearly very very powerful and it absolutely destroys the 7800X3D and even 9800X3D in this multi-core benchmark. And even in Geekbench 6, which is not going to be as multi-core heavy, well, it's still around 22% faster. And in the single core performance, it's actually tying roughly the 9800X3D. So on average, it's likely you'll see around 40% better multi-core performance out of the 265K versus something like a 9800X3D. And with much lower power draw, where even in a worst case scenario, I was not able to exceed 200 watts personally, that's a huge improvement over like the 300 watts of seeing with previous processors, decent gains from the BIOS, enormous overclocking potential, and a far lower price than the 9800X3D, and honestly, even 7800X3D right now, I think the 265K after the updates is actually pretty good. Now, would I say that it's the processor you should go out and buy? No, I don't think that's the case because quite frankly, picking up an X3D processor and having it just be excellent out of the box, no updates and no overclocking required, is definitely worth something. And I think the gamers are still gonna gravitate towards that CPU and with good reason. I think it is still gonna end up being a bit faster than the 265K even after you overclock it, but we'll have to wait and see when I do those nine different games. And again, that's right out of the box and it's gonna draw even less power. So that's a really good selling point. But with the 265K being so much cheaper, having tons of overclocking headroom and absolutely destroying the 9800X3D when it comes to multi-core, I think it's actually a pretty good option now after these updates if you want a good all-round PC. So there you have it, guys. The 265K might actually be getting slept on and it's certainly a lot better now than it was versus launch. And it's something that I feel like I can finally recommend. However, just be aware that to get the most out of the CPU for gaming, it is likely going to need some overclocking and that can be both risky, time consuming, as well as a big headache. So that's something you got to consider when building your new PC, but overall very impressed with the updates and I'd like to see what Intel has to offer with their next generation to see if it gets even better from here.
But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that the Core Ultra 200 CPUs, especially the Ultra 5 and Ultra 7, are finally good now considering the price and performance improvements that we've seen via the updates? Or do you feel like they're still not that great and you'd rather wait for a next generation chip or maybe buy an X3D processor instead? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.